Let me give you guys another example. Um, Because this is another one that is big for us right now as Christians. It's a big objection that we hear a lot of. And that's that of, how many of you guys have heard this? Have you guys ever even read the Old Testament, Christian? Do you see what God does in the Old Testament? God is so mean. He's so mean-spirited. He's vindictive and spiteful and he's judgmental and just, you know, he's, he's commanding genocide. He's telling them to go out and to kill people. Is that the God you worship? Really? Listen, if I'm going to worship God, it's definitely not going to be that God. That's a mean-spirited, you know, nasty God. You guys have heard that one, right? Once again, don't get flustered. Don't get thrown off. Think about what it is they're assuming. So they don't believe in God, right? It's an atheistic worldview. They're making an argument against God. And their thing is the individual, they themselves, the one who set the standard for justice. Do you guys see a pattern there? All those unchristian presuppositions, it's all about the individual. They determine what's right sexual relations. They determine who's valuable. They determine what justice is. For us, the Christians, we say that God is the standard for justice for all people at all times. See, what they're arguing is God doesn't exist. And the reason they give is that he doesn't meet their standard of justice and righteousness. Listen, God doesn't measure up to what I think God should be. That's what they're saying when they make that argument. And so what's our, what's our knee jerk reaction as Christians? You hear it so much. It's more like, oh yeah, well, you know, the old Testament, that's not really for us. And maybe God was a little harsh and we have Jesus now and Jesus preaches love and Jesus loves everybody. Listen, That does not, that's an unbiblical defense. The Bible does not teach us to leave. Listen, Jesus is the God of the Old Testament. So if you love Jesus, you love that God, right? So we need to be able to give an answer to this objection. So first of all, number one, don't answer according to their folly. Don't take on their worldview. Listen, they are not the standard of justice and we can't let them think that they're the standard of justice. We can't let them go on believing that what they think is just, what they think is righteous is in, is in fact just in righteousness. The Bible teaches us that God is perfectly just, perfectly righteous, and perfectly good, that he's never vindictive, that he never punishes harshly, he never punishes people beyond what they deserve, and in fact, God is patient and gracious with all people, and we in this life get less, much less suffering than we deserve from God, much less punishment than we deserve, much less discipline, I should say. The Bible also teaches us that all sin deserves to be punished. And since God is holy, all sin must be punished. And then when we get into that Old Testament, listen, you know, we need to know what we believe as Christians. And so during that time, what they're referring to in the Old Testament, God was using Israel, the people of Israel, those people at that time and that place specifically in history to bring out his just judgments on those nations that practiced idolatry, that practiced sexual immorality, that practiced child sacrifice, that God was using Israel during that time to righteously judge those people. It was just. And we need to be able to articulate that as Christians. Like, look, what you're referring to, that was justice. They did not get what they didn't deserve. Now, that being said, as New Testament Christians, we can say that, you know, what Jesus' words, you know, that, uh, Jesus teaches us to love and pray for our enemies. He tells us not to live by the sword or else we'll die by the sword. But also we're taught that, guess what? The world is already condemned for rejecting Christ Jesus, for rejecting God. And when Jesus returns, he is going to come back in judgment the way that that Old Testament stuff portrays. That stuff in the Old Testament should serve as a warning to us today that when God comes back, he's coming back to judge justly. And so anybody who would take that scripture and twist it and use it as an excuse to commit genocide today, they are absolutely unbiblically twisting the word of God. That's not a Christian worldview. However, the Christian worldview does teach us that the judgment is coming and it's the one man whom God has appointed to judge, not us. So tell them that the Bible does not support genocide. It tells us about God's justice but it doesn't tell us that we're to go out and kill people. That's absolutely not what the Bible teaches us today. So that's number one. Don't answer according to their folly. You give your defense on scripture, biblical worldview, but then answer. Again, you want to ask those why questions, the big questions, force them to defend themselves. So okay, say, okay, but according to your view, what's wrong with genocide? Why is that a problem? Why is it unjust to kill other people? And again, you can use that atheistic worldview. If they're arguing, saying that God does not exist, that we're the products of evolution, say, okay, 
Your worldview says that survival of the fittest, right? That we're to, you know, we want to survive and thrive our people group. And so what's wrong then if there's one group that occupies a certain land and, and it would be better for my group? Why can't we just go kill them and take that land? What's morally wrong with that? Or if somebody has something that I want that's going to be helpful for me, why can't I get rid of them and take it for myself? Or if there's a people group who, I'm, or who my group is able to enslave and it makes my life easier, my life better, and if they don't have the power to rise up against it and rebel and free themselves, then, hey, survival of the fittest, man. What's wrong with that? Morally, no problem. Or if somebody says that there's a certain group that is the root cause of all the problems in our society, why can't we just exterminate them? It's going to help us make our lives better. See, and that's exactly the logic and the reasoning that was used for things like slavery and the Holocaust. That's the worldview that led to those atrocities. But what's wrong with that? They can't, they can't give you a good moral reason why those things are wrong all the time in every place. See, as the Christian, we can answer those big why questions. We can say, again, God is the objective standard of justice. He's made people in his image. He's commanded us not to murder and not to steal, that we respect other people and their property. And violating these things are sinful and they're unjust because they go against the just character of God. Do you guys see how this works? How we get there? How we show them? Now listen, if you applied your standard that you are the authority of justice, why should that be binding for anybody else? You apply that consistently, what difference does it make? <clears throat> why is that wrong? But again, I always want to make sure that you guys know and remember, we get to the gospel that yes, God is just. And being just, he provides for us a perfect standard for justice for all people at all times. But God being just also means that he punishes all sin. He has to. And since all of us are, are sinners, all of us have treated people unjustly, all of us have stolen, all of us have violated God's justice, we're guilty of sin and deserving of punishment. But, and then you go on and you preach to them the good news of Christ Jesus. And remember that inconsistency that my dad mentioned, like with the nurse and the mafia and all that kind of stuff. That when they show, you know, with the doctors and nurses, when they're operating on people and they're striving to save lives, it shows that they're made in God's image. The same is true for this issue of justice. So every time you see somebody who's not a Christian outraged over some sort of injustice, when they're just irate about a mass shooting or they're grieving over injustices and, um, and, and things such as that, it shows that they're made in the image of God. Because listen, if you don't believe in God, what difference does it make if there's a mass shooting? Who cares? It's just, we're just evolved pawn scum. We're nothing. Ultimately, the universe is purposeless. See, they're acting contrary to what they say they believe. They say on the one side, God doesn't exist. We're not made in God's image. And then on the other side, they're upset about injustice, or, you know, thievery and things like that, murder. Why? It shows that they're made in the image of God. They can't escape it. And we need to point that out to them. We need to get to the place where we can point out that inconsistency in their living. That you say you believe this, but you're living like this. That's a Christian presupposition. That's a Christian worldview. 